Hello and welcome back to the interactive and immersive HQ. My name is Marco and currently I'm a master student in digital arts and creative technologies. And in today's video, I want to show you a touch designer technique on how you can recreate this uh, kind of color drip style, which is inspired by Gwen Stark. Yeah. She's a visual artist uh, and creates this really um, colorful uh, drip paintings. I mean, she also has some different styles, but yeah, in today's video, we want to recreate something like this here. And let me give you a little overview first um, and show you the, the touch designer network. So you can reset it uh, every time and with the different seed, you get um, like a slightly different result. And this is uh, animated now, but if you prefer a still drip art image, you can just um, also get a static image out of it. Yeah, and basically we just start with a rectangle and then we use uh, some, uh, just one feedback loop. Yeah, with some displacement and transforming and uh, some little post effects after that. Yeah, till we get our drip art out of here. Okay, so then let's start. We start with a rectangle. So let's draw a rectangle top and let's first change the resolution to 1280 by 1280. Yes, like the maximum of the free touch designer version. And we have to resize uh, it to on the x-axis to y, uh, to 1, and to 0 0.1. And then we just have to move the y-axis up to 0 0.5. And let's just give it any of these top, col uh, top colors here. So make sure to use one of these top colors, uh, otherwise the feedback will just end up white. So I just start with red here. It doesn't really make a difference uh, in the end. And so this is our input for the feedback loop. So let's create a feedback loop first with a composite, which we set to over and connect the start of our feedback loop again here. And let's also just uh, add an RGB key and a null already that we can use as a background display so that we see what's going on. Okay, and we have to drag and drop our composite back on our feedback. So still nothing is happening because well, we don't uh, do anything inside the feedback loop. So the first thing we want to add is a transform because we want that our red stripe uh, is moving down first. So this is the first movement that we will start to uh, recreate. And for that, we can just use a translate value here of 0 0.002. And we see you now every time we start our feedback loop with every frame, it just moves our uh, red rectangle down. Okay, and let's also just add a keyboard in shop ready so that we can re um, just reset our feedback system with pressing one. Okay. Then we also want it to kind of uh, get more narrow. Uh, the more, uh, the further down it gets. And for that, we can play around with the scale value here. So, yeah, let's just scale it to 0 0.99 on the x axis here. And, well, that looks not really like this, but we, we have the start of the form that it kind of gets more narrow and uh, narrow the more, uh, the further down we get. Okay, then we need some color change here. So that we want that the color changes while it's uh, moving down. And 
we can just insert an HSV adjust inside our feedback uh, loop here. And we can play around with the offset value here. And as you see, the lower the value, the longer or the, the more um, time we get between the color changes. And yeah, let's maybe set it to, to five. Yeah, that looks good. But it still looks very much like the original rectangle, like the, the shapes of it. We still see the 90 degree corners here. We can add a displace here and displace our image with a noise. Just move that up a little bit. So let's add a noise top here as well. And let's just plug this into here and set the output to noise. And that way we just get the same resolution for our noise, like uh, from our input. And in that case, we don't have to adjust it manually um, if we set a different resolution here in the beginning. Okay, let's connect it here. And well, that is displays too much. So let's set it down to zero point zero zero one or maybe a little bit more zero point zero zero two let's turn off the monochrome here and that way it gets displaced in like all directions and as we can see we are getting closer already to the effect um and well, now every time we reset it, we kind of get the same shape. Let's uh, adjust that quickly. Yeah, let's randomize the seed with every uh, reset of our feedback system. And we can do that by adding a count chop here. Let's add that to a null as well. And reference that to our seed. So now every time we are resetting our system, we get a different noise for the displacement and yeah, it just looks a little bit different every time. Okay, maybe here we can adjust the period a little bit, but yeah, we will come back to that later. Right now, we still have um, like a smooth transition between the colors, which in the trans dark style, it's not like that. There's more contrast um, between each color. So let's insert a RGB contrast here from the palette under image filters and just select the RGB contrast. And we can insert it here after our composite. And let's increase these values here. It's already better, but we still have a transition. So let's maybe just set them all to 100. And now you see we get uh, clearer borders between the colors. Yeah, we can close the palette here. And now I would like to add um, black borders between um, the colors. Yeah. And you can also see here, there's always like a black uh, line between. And we can do that with an edge top. So let's insert an edge and set it to comp over input change our edge color to black and let's increase the strength maybe the sample step a little bit to make it stronger okay now it's kind of very heavily displaced so let's maybe work on that we can increase the period 
Or we can also play with the displace weight here. Just set it down a bit. Yeah, I think this is a better pattern that we are getting now. And so right now we are getting the still images out of it, which are pretty close already, I would say, to the kind of drip drawing style. But I would like to have an animated one. So let's just go to our noise here. And under the translate, let's type in apps time dot seconds and times 0 0.1. No, did I make a mistake? Oh yeah, apps time dot seconds it has to be. And right now you see we are getting an animated uh, color drip effect. And well, now you can just play around with uh, some of these values here. So the displays weight makes a big difference. Then also how your noise actually looks. So if you decrease the period, you are getting more wiggly lines. And if you increase it, it gets a bit more smooth. Yeah, but I'm just going to leave it to one for now here. Of course, you can also just use the monochrome um, noise here. But you can see then uh, it just gets displaced on uh, two axes. And with the monochrome off, it gets displaced in all directions. But I don't know, something is a little bit off here. Just maybe increase the period a little bit. And um, you can also play around here with the translate. So maybe if you want to stretch it a little bit more. You can increase the translate Z value here. And for example, to get, um, to get, how to say, uh, if we change the hue offset here to something low, each color stretch will be longer. And if we increase it, we are getting smaller divisions between the colors. So as you see, the higher we get with the value here, the more often the color changes. It depends when you go really high here, it's maybe a little bit too much. So let's change it to eight. Okay, and now every time you press one, you get a different um, color drip here. And of course, you can just make copies uh, of this network and and just add them together to a composite to get uh, different layers. So yeah, you can also just add in the end a monochrome effect and add it to a different layer here. So monochrome, and yeah, then you could just add that and maybe change. Uh, some of the values here to get a different um, effect out of it. All right, that's it for the network. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.